and welcome to another RDK Innovation Spotlight episode where we speak to key players in the broadcast sector that are making their mark on the industry. My name is Betty and I'm Community Engagement Manager at GCS and I'm happy to be here with Simone Rio, Software Product Manager at Ventiva, which is previously known as Technicolor Connected Home. So, hi Simone. Very nice to be there and pleased to be able to share some insight about the market. Excellent, and we're keen to hear your thoughts. So just starting out with hybrid customer premises equipment or CPE and the strategies that are emerging among network service providers as they try to bring more functionality to set top boxes and gateways and connected homes. Do you see a trend here? Are we seeing a shift to a more agnostic CPE strategy? And how can this change the way the entire ecosystem will bring value to the market? Um, so thanks thank for asking. So what, what we have seen as Vantiva, either in the broadband market, the last 10 years is a lot of acquisition merged between NSP. So we used to have a world where we have on one side the DOCSIS operators, on the other side the telco operators. But now with the, all the acquisition, we are seeing broadband operators that will deliver all type of access. So we have operators delivering DOCSIS, fiber, and now 5G, the next big thing that is coming. And, and, and they are not looking for more speed, they are looking for user experience, bringing quality on whatever the type of access. So this is really a convergence on, on all type of access to bring services on user experience. Brilliant. And what factors were involved in creating this demand for a more seamless approach to broadband, where multiple categories of broadband access can be supported, like you mentioned? So I think as Vantiva, what we are seeing is the battle on the speed is behind us. All type of access are able to deliver more than one gigabit in downstream, in upstream. This is known, this is deployed, this is stable. So where the, the key differentiator will, will become on the, on the market for the NSP will be clearly on the services that the, the, the operator will provide to the end user. The quality also on, on also being able to keep the device more on the mark on the field. We, we see that the cost, the price of the device increased a lot the last year, the last two years due to COVID, due to supply issue. And, 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 and this, this trend is to keep the device as much as they can. And, and, and to do that, they will need to differentiate on the software. And this is where RDK everywhere will become the real battle today. Brilliant. And what factors were involved in creating this demand for a more seamless approach to broadband, where multiple categories of broadband access can be supported, like, like you mentioned? Yeah, very good point. So, so we came from a world where we used to have proprietary software. So for, for an NSP, it was very complex to bring new services on a proprietary software. So the, the way to do it was to go to the vendor, to each vendor, ask for a feature, ask for a services, and, and then the vendor will implement in a proprietary matter the features. So for an NSP, it was very complex because that means different implementation depending on the vendor, different way to manage the feature, different training for the support line for each of the devices, and, and, and no, with a single middleware, single software, RDK everywhere, for all vendor, all sub provider, all type of access, this will simplify a lot the life of the, of the NSP because they will have only one implementation, one way to manage the software, one training to the outline, and, and, and this will help them a lot on, on bring cost saving to them. That's great. And how is this more open approach to agnostic strategies changing the way products are designed? It, it changed a lot because we used to be responsible, accountable of the full software stack. With just one operator taking their destiny in hand and, and managing the, the software on their side, they will need to bring new new teams in their in their company. And, and they will need to interact from the beginning of the project. They will need to interact at each step of the project, so from the bootloader to the development phase, to the testing phase, to the deployment phase, to the maintenance phase. And so this, this will be a big change for them. So we need to be structured to do that. That's really interesting. So how does this shift the sort of investments that are made? Is there an opportunity here to save money? If so, where do network service providers have to make those investments to get the most cost benefit rewards while maintaining the best experience for the consumer base? What we are seeing today with, with our, our tier one operators is they are investing at the beginning. They are investing in, in, in developers team, in testing team, in infrastructure. So this is a big chance for them. This is where they need to invest because they will be part of the development of the product. And, but at the end, this will save cost because they will be able to, to, to take their destiny in hand again. And, and, and they will be able to, to decide when on what features they will deploy. And, and they will also be able to, 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 to keep the device 
more on the feed. So for the life cycle of the device, it's a, it's a lot of saving because today a device that has a security hole that nobody can fix it, they need to remove it from the field. Where now, with their destiny in hand on being able to fix it themselves, they will decide what to do with the device. And would you say this lengthens the life cycle of this software-driven ecosystem? It sort of future-proofs the CPE and the connected home because you're in a better place to upgrade and update that investment in infrastructure within the home. Is that right? Yeah, that is correct. They, they will not rely on the vendor or the stock provider. They will rely on themselves to do the grade, to be able to keep the device in the field up to date. Brilliant. And can you tell me more about the work you're doing with RDK, specifically RDK Broadband? You know, how is Ventiva using this technology to drive innovation and you know, stand out in the market? So yes, so, so Ventiva is not new in the market. So we are there for more than 20 years. And even myself, I have worked for, for Ventiva for more than 15 years in the broadband market. So yeah, we, we know what's going on in the market. We know how to do broadband devices, and, and, and we even open source RDKB in 2016. So the, we have open source the full software stack to the community, and the first device has been deployed with RDKB in 2017, 2018. And since then, Ventiva deployed 100% of the DOCSIS cable gateways with RDK. We have more than 25 million deployed with RDK, and we are very, very proud of that. And on, on the, last three, three, the last three years, we have done a lot of work to bring RDK on top of fiber. So DOCSIS is done, 25 million gateways deployed. Fiber is ready to be deployed. And on the next 25 million for Ventiva will be 5G gateways with RDK. And this is where, with our experience, we can help the operators to, 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 to deploy their own RDK as well. That's awesome. So what can we expect to see from Ventiva this year and beyond? You know, what's the plan to support the community and how will you be working with network service providers and the ecosystem moving forward? Yeah, so so we, we are part of the community. And, and even two weeks ago, I was in, in London with the community. After two years of COVID, it was very good to, to, to meet again all those guys. And, and, and I can tell that the last five years, the community grew a lot. <laughs> we, have more, we were more than 50 different companies two weeks ago, discussing very smart things about RDKB, what we can do, what we can improve, what, what are the next steps to improve, who can, who can solve issues, we can bring quality, um, and all this to, 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 to have in mind that we want to faster, faster the, the, the time to market, and, and we also want to improve the quality and be able to give services uh, to end users. And can you tell us a bit more about what Ventiva specifically offers when it comes to RDKB? Ventiva has a full portfolio, so we are, we are well known as a hardware vendor. So we are delivering all type of access. So we are delivering DOCSIS gateways, we are delivering fiber, 5G, hybrid gateways, 4G, and on, 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 on DSL gateways. So, so th this is what we are doing for four years now. And, and the offering is to bring RDK on top of all those type of access, okay? To, to be able to, to deliver to the tier one operators, tier two, tier three operators also that doesn't want to take part of the development of the software, we are still there to help them and bring RDK on all the type of access. So you mentioned a kind of hybrid gateway solution, which if I'm understanding correctly, is the ability to simultaneously support a combination of access gateways. So for example, DOCSIS and 5G or fiber and 5G, um, are you seeing a greater demand for this type of hybrid solution? Yeah, we are seeing demand because we have deployed more than 1 million gateways, hybrid gateways supporting 4G. And, and we are already working on the next gen 5G um, hybrid gateways. So, so we are seeing demand, we are seeing a value of that. Um, what we want to do, what, what we see in the market is also we don't want to have internet disconnection. So to do that, as you mentioned, we, we need to have failover mechanism, we need to have backup mechanism where we are able to switch from Ethernet 1 to the DOCSIS gateway. So, so this, this exists indeed. Excellent. Well, thanks so much, Simone, for the brilliant conversation and taking the time to share your insights with us. Um, you know, it's always great to learn more about the evolution of the environment and capabilities in the CPE space and, you know, specifically what Ventiva are doing to drive innovation in the industry. So thanks so much again. It was great speaking to you. Thanks.